guys, welcome to this video. Today we're going to be talking about the death of Eva Fanato. Whilst I do a drawing of the Batman, I hope you enjoy this video. If you do, please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe down below for more. Now let's get into it. Japan is known as a relatively safe country, with a traditional culture that includes respect for elders, a strong family unit, and caring for children. There are ceremonies that even celebrate children as they turn into adults, such as Children's Day, celebrating boys, Dolls Festival, celebrating girls, and an age ceremony at ages 3, 5, and 7, where children are dressed in kimonos and receive gifts and prayers for a healthy and happy life. But despite this respect and adoration for children, the reality is that children face a lot of pressure, both from within and outside their family. As early as kindergarten, children are forced to not only study at school, but enter after-school programs called cram schools, where they are bombarded with subjects like math, science, Japanese, and English even before they can tie their own shoes. Commonly, there is a very little play or off time in children's lives, as from sunrise to sunset there is a schedule of something to be done. Even at school, after lunch, kids spend time cleaning the school. At home, most kids are made to do chores, do their homework and go to bed early. Despite their busy lives, at home, they are still loved. However, some kids aren't so lucky. Many children are abused verbally or physically by their parents or family members. In fact, Japan witnessed a record of 2,170 child abuse cases in 2021. Of course, the number is probably much higher as many cases go unreported, but in this case of the death of Yua Funato, the parents have been reported repeatedly to the police by neighbours, and even Yua herself had begged to be taken away from her family. Despite these pleas, in the end, Yua's life was cut short at the age of five. Yua's mother, Yuri, was born in Kagawa Prefecture in 1992. There is not much known about her past that has been reported in the media except that shortly after high school, she got married and had her first child, Yua, when she was 19 years old. Born in 2012, when Yua was just three years old, Yuri got divorced and became a single mother. To make ends meet, she was working at a hostess club at night in North Japan. Hostess clubs are bar lounge type places where men go to socialise. Hostesses serve drinks, sit with the men, and flirt in hopes of getting tips and repeat little customers in order to make money. While working at the hostess club, a staff of the shop named Yudai was entranced by her beauty and personality. The manager of the hostess club where they worked told Abima TV, quote, He was serious about his work and during work, cleaned silently by himself. He loved seeing Yua, Yuri's daughter, who often came to the shop while her mum was working. He said he thought she was the type to take good care of her children. Yua's stepfather, Yudai, was born in 1985 and is from Hokkaido, Japan. After attending junior and high school in Sapporo, he decided to attend university in Tokyo. After graduation, he worked for a cable television company in Tokyo before being transferred to Sapporo. In Sapporo, he decided to work at the host desk club where he eventually met Yuri in 2015. After Yuri's divorce, the pair started a romantic relationship and both quit the host desk club and got married in 2016 when Yua was four years old. Yuri was tired of the flirting, drinking and late nights at the host desk club and was ready to settle down and have a real family. After they got married in 2016, they moved to Yuri's hometown in Kagawa, Japan to be closer to her family. Yuri was also pregnant with Yudai's child, so they were planning to settle down in Kagawa to raise a family. Once in Kagawa, Yudai started working at a food company and according to his co-workers and boss at his company, was a good worker. Japanese media outlets reported, quote, A 44-year-old man who worked with Yudai in Kagawa said he was never late or missed work and never complained about having to work on his days off. 
Udai apparently said that once his son was born, he would need to work even harder for the family. It was around this time that the abuse of both Yua and Yuri began, and Udai came onto the radar of child services in Japan. While Yuri and Udai were dating, Yua was being treated kindly and lovingly by both. Yudai was seen as a great stepfather and had taken a liking to Yua. He took her to amusement parks, bought her what she asked for, and treated her like his own daughter. The neighbor said, quote, The girl and the man played ball. They were on good terms. I have never heard crying or yelling from their home. Yuri, the mother, also told courts, quote, Yua got a piggyback, was hugged, and was a good friend with Yudai. She would ride on his knee and was spoiled by him. But after they were married and moved to Kagawa, things began to change. Manichi News explained that the abuse of Yua was reported as early as the summer of 2016, just before Yuri and Yudai's son was born. Manichi News said, quote, A neighbor reported to the police that terrible crying was heard from the apartment. The Kagawa Prefectural Child Welfare Consultation Center visited the home, but was told by Yuri that it's only natural children cry. Yuri told courts later during that time, as the birth of her son was approaching, Yudai had become stressed out and very controlling and abusive towards her and Yua. Yudai was known to exact strict discipline and became violent towards both Yuri and Yua including kicking Yua in the stomach and other assaults on her. On Christmas, neighbours found Yua left outside on the cold front porch in her pyjamas. The doctor who examined her noticed that she had cuts on her lips and eyelids and had been victim to daily abuse. Police were called and she told them, quote, I'm scared of my father, I don't want to go back to my home. This was when the Children's Consultation Centre decided to remove her from her home for temporary protective custody. After a couple of months apart, Yudai apologised for his actions, promising he had reflected on his past behaviour and promised to never abuse Yua again. Yua was returned home in February of 2017. Although documents were sent to Yudai about suspicion of injury, he was never prosecuted. A month later, in March of 2017, a policeman found Yua outside alone, again. This time, she had red scars on her lips, her tongue was cut, there were abrasions on her knees and a bruise on her abdomen. She told the police officer she was hit by her father. She said, quote, My daddy beat me and my mommy was there too. But when the police talked to her parents, he was told she was playing and fell and claimed she wasn't beaten. However, the Kagawa Child Consultation Center once again took Yua away from her parents temporarily. Documents for suspicion of injury were once again sent to Yudai, but he was never prosecuted. This time, Yua was released back to her parents in July of 2017. During an interview of Yudai with the consultation office, Yudai said, Quote, I hear her to discipline her. Also, her eating too much is no good. Having the figure of a model is ideal. This was his reasoning for beating and starving Yua. The head of the Kagawa local authority said the idea of removing Yua more permanently from her parents was dropped after the parents refused and officials assessed her injuries as insufficient to convince the family court to override their wishes. Throughout 2017, despite getting visits from consultation centre staff, Yua kept claiming she was hit by her father and often had bruises but was never taken out of the home. The head of Kagawa local authority admitted that removing Yua permanently was abandoned after the parents refused. Before the centre could do anything further, Yuri informed them that the family was moving to Tokyo. Yudai, who had lived in Tokyo before, believed he could find a better job and thought Tokyo would be a better place to bring up a family. Unfortunately, despite having friends and acquaintances in Tokyo, 
Udai was unemployed and grew increasingly frustrated at not being able to provide for his family. His stress, frustration and anger began to be pushed onto Yua, who he felt was overweight, spoiled and needed to be disciplined even more than before. Once in Tokyo, Yudai, Yuri, Yua and her little baby brother began living in Megaro in 2018. Yudai believed that he would be able to turn things around and that they would no longer need any support or intervention from the consulting office and cut ties. Yuri also refused to give the center in Kagawa her new address in Tokyo. Kagawa officials were finally able to track down the family and sent their files to the Tokyo offices. The office in Tokyo sent workers to check up on the family at the end of January, but Yuri refused to let them in or let them see Yua. By this time, Yua had been abused so badly that she had lost a lot of weight, had many bruises and marks on her body, and was very weak. Yudai and Yuri told courts that Yua was often made to wake up at 4am to practice writing Japanese in her notebook. She was only given two bowls of miso soup a day as meals, was often doused in the bathtub with cold water, and was beaten and left alone in her empty room often. At the time police found her, she had over 170 injuries to her body. Kept out of school, forced to follow strict rules laid out by Yudai, and often scolded by both Yudai and her mother, Yua would often write in her notebook how sorry she was. Here are some of the things roughly translated that police found in her notebook after her death. It reads, Even if my mum and dad don't tell me, I'll do my best and do more and more tomorrow. Please forgive me, please forgive me, please. I promise I won't do it again. Please forgive me. I'm sorry I couldn't do what you asked yesterday. I will fix what I have done so far. How stupid I have been stupid so far. Stop playing because you look stupid. I won't do it anymore. I couldn't finish it today. I think I'll do it tomorrow. Do your best. I'll do it with the feeling that I'll show it to my dad and mum and they will be proud. I'm sorry for my mistakes and I will try harder tomorrow. Please forgive me. On February 27th, Yua's health deteriorated quickly. She began vomiting continuously, she was unable to eat food, had trouble walking on her own, and was wearing her baby brother's diapers because she couldn't control her bowels. Her parents refused to take her to the hospital because they were afraid their abuse would be found out by the doctors when they saw her condition. For the next two days, Yua tried her best to eat, walk, and even took a bath, which she had not been able to do for a while. On March 2nd, 2018, too sick to walk, lacking energy, and weighing only 12 kg, her mother gave her some energy drinks while she watched anime on her computer. She was complaining of pain in her abdomen and her vomiting continued. Around 5.30pm, her mother comforted her by saying, quote, Let's go to Tokyo Disneyland together and enjoy our time when you start elementary school. Yua closed her eyes and never woke up again. When Yudai and Yuri realised her limbs had gone cold and her heart had stopped, they called 110, the equivalent to 911 in North America or 999 in the United Kingdom. The firefighters found Yua had passed away. Later, an autopsy revealed that she had died from sepsis after developing pneumonia. The day after Yua died, her father Yudai was arrested and charged with neglect and assault leading to death. He pleaded guilty to his crimes at the Tokyo District Court in October of 2019. Kyoto News said, quote, Although Fanato admitted to most of the charges, he claims he only realised Yua's health was in critical state on March 1st, just before her death contradicting the prosecutor's claim that he knew she was in bad shape days earlier. Yuri also testified against Yudai, 
telling the court that she was also abused physically and verbally by Udai and felt she had to go along with his wishes in order to avoid further abuse. The court found Udai guilty and gave him a 13-year prison sentence, which he accepted without appeal. Yuri was also charged with parental neglect resulting in death. As Cyan News explained Yuri's defence strategy, saying, quote, Lawyers for Fanato pleaded for leniency for their client on grounds she was a victim of psychological violence by Udai. They argued that she was under control of Udai and harangued by him for hours each day with the result that she turned a blind eye to the violence being inflicted against Yua. In the end, she was given an eight-year sentence by the Tokyo District Court with Judge Minoru Morishita saying, quote, It is impossible to imagine the victim's suffering, sorrow, and despair in the days leading up to her death as her beloved mother acquiesced to the extreme diet regimen. Yuri appealed the verdict, but the Tokyo High Court rejected her appeal and upheld the eight-year sentence. Quote, even if there was an influence of domestic violence, she should have been capable of taking action as a mother to get medical support for her daughter, the judge said. There is a big issue with the child consultation centres. Most workers are in charge of 50 cases and have very little time to focus on each individual child's needs and circumstances. The emergency anti-abuse plan adopted after US death aims to add 3,000 officers by 2022 in an effort to reduce the workload to about 40. But is this still too little? Had the consulting centres actually been able to intervene more and had resources available to them to stop the continuous pattern of violence you die was doling out to Yua, she might still be alive. Hopefully, her death was a wake-up call to parents, children, and the government that more needs to be done to protect children from violence and hold parents responsible for their crimes. In 2020, an editorial was released by the Minichi saying, quote, The number of abuse consultations fielded by child consultation centers across Japan has continued to reach record highs. Last fiscal year, there were over 190,000 cases. 20% more than during the previous fiscal year. Particularly prominent in the rise in domestic violence committed in front of children. Cases of physical abuse and neglect are also increasing. The child consultation center system, which play a central role in responding to abuse cases, needs to be strengthened. Even so, Tokyo's 23 wards and other areas that have been pressing ahead with establishing new consultation centers have been struggling to secure new workers. Considering that the number of consultations is increasing, we hope the government will put even more effort into training workers for this role.